resurrection celebrate the fourth Sunday in ordinary time mass is being offered for Joyce Markley our entrance hymn is word of God come down to earth number 701 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This weekend, we mark the beginning of our annual Catholic Schools Week. We call to mind the mission of discipleship and education that we are blessed to be able to share at Church of the Resurrection. And so our school families and students will be assisting with some of the ministries of the Masses this weekend. We ask the Lord to continue to help us learn of his love for us and of his mercy. Confident in this, we pause, calling to mind our sins and asking God's mercy and pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our heart and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you all that I command you, be not crushed on their account as though I would leave you crushed before them. For this is, for it is the day, for it is I this day, who have made you a fort, fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land.
And I am A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, love, these greatest is love. The word of the Lord.
to proclaim liberty to captives. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure thyself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, I was visiting with a friend of mine who was able to go to the Kansas City Chiefs game last Sunday. I believe the Chiefs versus the Chargers. I watched it with my brother, and uh, if you had watched, or maybe some of you were there or had heard, it was quite an ending to the game. I think there were about three endings that Chiefs during games, making it very difficult for visiting teams to communicate well with people. The switch to impression, and then back to elation again. And there was a great swing in the crowd to which Jesus was speaking in the synagogue, as we hear in Luke's Gospel today. Notice the, the shift in attitude of the listeners to Jesus. When he begins, and we're, we're continuing the passage that we heard last weekend, when Jesus came to Capernaum on the Sabbath and proclaimed the passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and we hear the very same verses beginning this passage in Luke that we heard concluding. Today, Jesus said, this scripture passage is in your filling, is, is fulfilled in your hearing. And then we hear, all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They were very amazed and very complimentary. Isn't this Joseph's son? But then at the end of the reading, what do we hear? Hear, When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury and rose up, drove him out of the town to the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. This is the same moment, the same event, moving from amazement at his gracious words to wanting to murder him. Now, maybe in our families, we have those swings of emotions with one another. Emotions. 
the group of admiration to murder God, a God is a miracle word. It is the sting of the people's conscience. When he talks about the prophets Elijah and Elisha performing miracles for non Jewish people. And so they were stung to the heart. But does that really account for the, the shift in their attitude? in their attitude. And I would say it doesn't. It was, there, was, there was someone else who was at work in this moment in the hearts and minds of that group of people, and it was Satan. To shift the people from gracious admiration of Jesus to wanting to murder him. Throughout the scriptures, there were seven moments, if you will, that Satan sought to murder Jesus assassination attempts on the life of Jesus. Once Satan learned who Jesus was, the Son of God who had come to establish God's kingdom on earth, Satan was out to murder Jesus. As Jesus says in John's Gospel of Satan, the devil, he was a murderer from the beginning. And then a short time after that, we hear when Jesus is in the wilderness, the 40 days in the wilderness, when he goes out and is tempted by Satan. One of the temptations is for Jesus to throw himself down from the parapet of the temple, in a sense, to commit suicide. And then later, we hear when Jesus is in another crowd of people. He's in another crowd in the temple. And the people are so upset with him, they seek to stone him. And then this passage, chapter 4 in Luke's Gospel, they seek to throw him off the precipice of the hill. The other attempts, when Jesus is crossing the sea, and there's an unexpected and sudden storm at sea, the evil one is seeking to drown the Lord. And then moving to the last two attempts, Jesus' great agony in the garden, when he, is, he says, I, I am agony even unto death, that the evil one was seeking Jesus to despair so much that he would die in that moment. And finally, the last and successful assassination attempt on the Lord, the crucifixion, when Jesus actually does succumb to withstand no the devil was in the mix of that group. And so we need to be aware, not individually, that it groups in the community are And so to be agents of change in that, we need to be praying for the groups to which we belong, certainly our families our parish community, our school, our places of employment, our fellow co-workers, individuals that join us in other activities and purposes, to be agents of grace that, that 
charity, that love that we hear so eloquently expressed in the second reading, love is patient, love is kind, it does not brood on wrongdoing, it does not think of, of, of getting revenge. So for us to, to be those agents of change in our society and in our groups today, to undo the efforts of the evil one, to lead us in groups against God's will, or seeking to undo the grace that he's performing in our lives. Jesus was able to walk through the crowd and pass in their, through their midst. He has the grace to be able to diffuse those situations. So we ourselves seek that in our lives. Lord, help us to diffuse the work of the evil one in our society. Help us to be those agents of grace and change to bring about your peace. Now stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the work to come. Amen. With confidence in the Father's love and care for us, we lift up our voices in these petitions that we offer. For church leaders, especially the Pope and all bishops, that they will proclaim the word of God with passion and preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders in our local, state, and national governments, that they will exercise their duties with integrity and promote the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for teachers in Catholic schools, that they will follow the example of Jesus, the great teacher, and now of our great respect and, and esteem for them during this Catholic Schools Week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For administrators, teachers, staff, volunteers and benefactors in our Catholic schools, in our Catholic school and in all schools, that, that they will be blessed for their dedication and service to our young people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and students, that they will continue to grow in knowledge and love for one another and God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needy in our midst, especially the sick, the elderly, the lonely, the unemployed, and the Ill illiterate, that God will use our hands to serve them and 
our hearts to love them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they will find favor with God and be welcomed into the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, may these prayers that we offer be informed and inspired by that perfect love that we seek to fulfill in our lives. Fill our hearts with trust in you, and for those persons for whom we have prayed, may your gracious mercy come upon them. Hear our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. Mercy people so that from the rising of a sacred setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly for you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts for consecration, that they may become holy and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In command, we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This all of you eat of it, for this is my blood, which will be given up for you. Similar way was ended. He took the chalice, giving you thanks, blessing the chalice of the disciples. Take all of you and drink from This is the chalice of my blood. Which will be poured out for you and many for forgiveness. A mystery of faith. We you proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Blessed of this thing have said before you, in your compassion will follow, gather all your children, scatter to our At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your merciful love. Be strong, let your heart take courage. All who hope in the Lord, Father, into your hands I come. breath of 
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By now, many of you have seen the news or heard about District Attorney Mark Bennett's uh, response to the allegation against Father Shim that the office is not pursuing charges. Uh, that statement was released without any consultation with the bishop or us at the chancery, so we weren't aware that it was going to be released this week. We were hoping for a statement from the district attorney. That response will be now combined with the results of the investigation, which we are very soon to complete. And Bishop Kimmy will now um, take this information, review the information that our investigation has uh, disclosed, and in the weeks ahead be arriving at a decision um, on Father Shim's status. So that's what I can tell you this far. And uh, just pray for uh, the bishop's discernment. Uh, continue to pray for Father Shim. I'm in contact with him pretty regularly. He's been doing well, of course, uh, handling the news as it comes and goes. Um, so just praying for his steadfastness and really God's will for the parish of the Church of the Resurrection. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.